Um, so good morning. Welcome to the licensing subcommittee. I'm Councillor Anna Bradnam uh, from Milton and Waterbeach Ward, and I'll, um, we need to ask first before we make a start. Uh, I have Councillor also on the panel with me, um, Councillor Jeff Harvey. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Councillor Jeff Harvey, and I represent Borsham Ward. Thank you, and Councillor Mark Howell. Uh, Mark Howell, and I'm from the Papworth Ward. Thank you. So, before we start, can I, we just need to agree amongst... And we'll have to start. Uh, can you... Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I yeah. It sorry. Some difference, uh... We've got interesting works going on outside. We, had, we leave the doors open normally for the purposes of COVID uh, risk reduction. If you leave one set open, um, Aaron, that's fine. If I should leave the inner set and just close the outer ones, that's fine, thank you. So um, the first thing we need to do is to um, appoint a chair. So can I ask, are there any nominations for the chair? I um, nominate yourself. Thank you very much. Is, is that acceptable? Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So that's more formality uh, done. I'll act as chair for this committee. So... Um, So we've introduced ourselves, and would I, can I just ask you if, if you would be so kind as to introduce yourselves so I know who we're talking to. So do go ahead. There we go. Craig Vines from the Lodge Inductors. Thank you. And sir? Michael Wright, a resident opposite the Lodge Inductor. Thank you. Joanne Phillips, the neighbour of the lodge behind it. Lovely, thank you. Sorry, I didn't quite catch your name, I do apologise. Joanne Phillips. Thank you very much. Joanne Phillips, so we've got Craig Vines, uh, Michael Wright, Joanne Phillips, and we've also got um, Tim McMahon online. Tim, would you like to just introduce yourself? Yes, hi there, uh, Tim McMahon, living at Mark B. Close in Duxford. Sorry, living at? Mark B. Close. Ah. Right, Mark, yeah. Mark, be close. Thank you very much, Tim. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending. Um, so first, before we start, um, I'll just int we've introduced the members of the subcommittee, and I just want to also take the opportunity to introduce the officers. So, Shirley. Good morning, Shirley Tracy. I'm the solicitor for the council. Shirley, you might need to hold your, have your microphone a little bit closer to you. Thank you. And uh, Brooke O'Neill, would you like to? Good morning, my name's Brooke O'Neill and I'm the licensing technical officer. Thank you, and Rachel. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, I'm Rachel Jackson, the principal officer for licensing. Thank you very much. And um, Aaron? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Democratic Services Officer, here to take a record of today's meeting and make sure it's streamed out to the public. Thank you very much. So, um, thank you, everybody. Right, so first, first off, um, we just need to start with um, declarations of interest, please. Thank you. Councillor Howell. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, I am a personal alcohol licence holder. Um, I have been taking advice, and that doesn't preclude me from this discussion, but I should um, make everybody known to that. Thank you very much. Jeff, do you have one? No, no, no interest, uh, Chair. Thank you very much. Okay, so... With that, let's make a start. Um, so, firstly, could we have um, the, oh, um, the, the licensing technical officer, Brooke O'Neill, would you like to introduce your report, please? Thank you, Chairman. So, I will start with the details. On the 31st of January 2022, an application to vary a premises license for the Dodge, the Dodge, the Lodge, that would help, <laughs> Duxford, Ickleton Road, Duxford, CB 22 4RT, was submitted to the licensing authority and advertised and consulted upon. The application is to permit the following. The supply of alcohol for consumption on and off the premises, Monday to Thursday, 11 a.m. until 11 p.m., Friday, 11 a.m. until midnight. Saturday, 10 a.m. 
until midnight and Sunday 10 a.m. until 11 p.m. Please note the hours for the outdoor bar to finish at 11 p.m. on all days and the non-standard timings will be New Year's Eve until 1 a.m. The provision of recorded music, both indoors and outdoors, Monday to Thursday, 7 a.m. until midnight, Friday and Saturday, 7 a.m. until 12.30 a.m., Sunday, 7 a.m. until midnight. Note, the outside area will only have ambient music not to start prior to 9 a.m., and to finish by 11 p.m. all days. The non-standard timings again are for New Year's Eve until 1 a.m. We then have the provision of live music for both indoors and outdoors, Monday to Saturday, 12 a.m. until midnight, and Sunday, 12, 12 p.m. until 10 p.m. Please note the timings for the outside area are to be limited to 10 p.m. on all days and Sunday hours where the following Monday is a bank holiday will be as per the Saturday, so 12 until 12. The non-standard timings will be New Year's Eve until 1 a.m. And late night refreshment we have Friday and Saturday, 11 p.m. until midnight, and the hours for the outdoor bar to finish at 11 p.m. on all days. Again, we have the non-standard timings for New Year's Eve until 1 a.m. So the application also states to change the following additional conditions. So these were added previously. The limitation on use of the outside bar to extend the hours from 9.30 p.m. until 11 p.m. And it currently states that the last food order is to be at 9 p.m. So we wish to amend this to read last table to be seated at 9 p.m. The application form is attached as Appendix A, which is from page nine of the report, and a location plan attached as Appendix B. So this will be 20, page 25 of the report. The current license and additional conditions are attached as Appendix C from page 27 of the report. The application was advertised in the Cambridge News on the 11th of February, 2022, and the site notice displayed on the premises as required. Environmental Health have requested that conditions be added to any license that may be granted. These conditions are detailed in this report and have been accepted by Mr Vines, the applicant. There were no responses from any other responsible authorities and representations have been received from Duxford Parish Council and the local residents. The red squares on Appendix C, um, which is page 27, show where the representations were made in relation to the premises. Page 25 is where the map is. Appendix C. Is that 25? But the map yeah. is on page 25. My apologies, page 25. The redacted representations are attached as Appendix D, so they are labelled D1 to D20, and these are from page 33. There are no policy presumptions within the Council's Statement of Licensing policy against the variation of the licence unless it can be shown that the application would undermine or prejudice the licensing objectives. The subcommittee in determining the application will consider the steps set out in section 18 of the Licensing Act 2003. The subcommittee will decide whether to grant the license, imposing all mandatory conditions in the terms set out in the application or take any of the following steps before granting the license. We have A, to modify and grant the license with such conditions it, considered, it considers required for the promotion of the licensing objectives, which can include granting the license subject to different conditions in respect of different parts of the premises or different licensable activities. B, grant the license in different terms by excluding from the scope of the license any of the licensable activities to which the application relates. C, refuse to specify the person nominated in the license as the premises supervisor and require a different person 
to be nominated and accepted by the subcommittee before gra granting the license, or D, reject the application entirely. This concludes my introduction, Chairman. Thank you very much, Ms. O'Neill. That's very helpful. Uh, the next step then is, um, does anybody have any questions of clarification for the officer? No? Okay, um, I have a couple. Um, just before uh, uh, the committee, I asked if it was possible uh, for Mr. Vines to bring along any records of the monitoring done on the existing sound um, limiting system. And I appreciate it was very short notice, but I wondered, can you tell me how those are whole, held and how you could have brought them if I'd given you more notice? Uh, could you use your microphone, please? So from the original conditions of the license, there was supposed to be a sound limiter agreed with the environmental health, which never happened due to COVID. It right. So again, could so you bring your a... microphone a bit closer to you, please? The, the point being, Mr. Vines, for everybody here, we need to be able to speak clearly through the microphone because the people online need to no, be able to hear us. It. Thank you. So uh, following the last grant of the change of the license, there was a condition put in there that working with DHO, a sound limiter should be installed. Um, that has never happened, not because of us. We were supposed to do it together as a joint exercise and COVID has stopped that from, from happening. Um, so all of our checks are perimeter checks, um, which is literally for noise that can be heard. If we're to look at any complaint that may have come in, that has always come from something that's been done for an extension of a license. So it's always about timing rather than level of noise within our normal time. Okay, so no sound limiter was installed um, and your checks have always been from your boundary. Yes. Do you have a decibel meter that you're using? We have, you, one. have you kept a record? That's really the record <coughs> that I was interested to hear. About. We have one, but it's not recorded. So as in, we, we use it to make sure there's a certain level of sound, but again, it's difficult at different points of the village, which I think we've all discussed before. You can hear at different elements. I think the um, condition of the previous license was it that we expected you to um, take the records at your boundary. So we go to the back, but there's no, there's no record taken. Okay. And the other thing, sorry, these are questions to you really, rather than to the officers. Um, but maybe the officers can confirm um, when the uh, responsible person changed from being, or, or has it changed? Because you, previously, when we granted a license, the applicant was Philippa Infanti. Is she still a part of the business, or has she moved She's on and it's now yourself? She's moved on, yeah. When, when, when did that change happen? Uh, May last year. May 21? 21. 21. Okay, thank you. Right, okay, so um, so are there any other any technical matters that people want to clarify with the officers at all other than those that I've asked? Um, I, I'd quite like to also, sorry, just another couple of things. Um, could uh, the legal officer advise me whether uh, the licensing rules, and I think the answer to this is no, but I just want to check. Do the licensing, does the licensing permit give us any control over parking at the premises? Um, Chair, it, it, conditions can be put on in respect of what's in the control of the um, responsible person, but in terms of parking, then no, that, would, that wouldn't be. Okay, okay. Yeah. right. As I thought. Okay. So, uh, so let's go on then to Mr. Vines. Um, would you like to address us? We'll allow you time to present your case, and we may ask you some questions afterwards. So, do go ahead. Thank you. So, <coughs> just to be clear here, for the objective of our application, it was to tidy up the existing license, which was changed in September 20. Um, the request that we have made, I think, has been potentially unclear to everybody because of the way that the application process takes place. But we're not 
where there is an element which was discussed with Chloe Mapple from, from the Environmental Health, where there is a request for record, <coughs> sorry, the provision of recorded music, which I think for most that people are interested in is outdoors. We understood that to be sort of background ambient music, um, which is actually now clear that it's not the case. Um, so where, for us to understand, we're actually asking to allow recorded music or live music until 10 o'clock, which is 30 minutes past the current time, which is allowed. And the same, another key element there is the outdoor bar. There is a restriction. So we are allowed to serve alcohol for people to drink outside until 11 p.m. Um, what the, the condition stops us from doing is using our outdoor bar past 9.30 to serve alcohol, but we can serve from the same so port. from indoors. From indoors. You? So essentially, from we serve from the right until 9.30 and from the left from 9.30 until 11, and we're perfectly within our you know rights to do so. What we're asking for there is to allow us, the condition on the music is, is an extension for half an hour, the, until 11 o'clock for the alcohol, is to allow us to use the same bar, maintaining some level of profitability and, and ease of service for our team. It doesn't change the, you know, the concept of people outdoors drinking until 11 o'clock. So, sorry, just to clarify, these are always complicated descriptions of times and dates and ins and outs. So currently your on license enables you to sell from within the premises until 11 p.m but your outdoor bar is limited until 9. 9.30. 9.30, sorry. Yes. So what you're asking is that your outdoor bar should be permitted to sell until 11, the same as your indoor bar? Yes. Okay. Okay, and you're asking in addition for the music licenses to be, uh, to be allowed? So, and again, there, just to be clear on that, sorry. So we, I think we are asking and saying until 10 p.m., but I understand we can't be limited before 11, so no one's happy to put a condition on the license to say 11, which gives us almost, it's our word against anybody else, which is obviously the, the challenge I have in probably trying to get this, you know, to do you mean somebody? Do you mean that people couldn't say whether you had bought drinks from indoors or outside? Sorry, that, no, it's to do with the music, sorry. I, I, it's, okay. it's difficult to impose something on us before 11 where we're, we're actually happy. What we're trying to look for is Friday and Saturday nights is really where I'm interested in until 10 p.m. But that can't a restriction hasn't been agreed to put be put on us for the rest of the days in the week. I have no intention of playing music on a Monday, a Tuesday, Wednesday, a Sunday evening. That's not that's not there. But I understand from the application process it's not possible to request that in writing as such. Um, it seems to me the application form does allow you to do that. Ms. Brooke, yes, Brooke so would you like to um, yeah. explain? What Mr. Vines is referring to is a condition that was actually imposed on the licence. So it's, number one, no amplified live and or recorded music shall be played in external areas of the site after 9.30pm, when actually the Live Music Act, yes. you can do so until 11pm, so this condition shouldn't have been imposed on the license. Yeah, okay, we moved on. Yes, uh, just but with that, it's within the terms of the other conditions that periodic checks needed to be carried out at the boundary. And it was on the understanding at the time that all sound would go through a sound limiter. And that we know, we've just heard from Mr. Vines that that hasn't been implemented, okay. Councillor Howells. Yeah, on a separate matter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, just as a, a question for both um, Ms. O'Neill and Mr. Vine as well. So on page four, I'm looking there at the conditions that you are um, added, which I'm looking at the um, number nine, bullet point one. Yeah? yeah? Okay. So it says that all windows and external doors to your third premises should be closed at all times during the regulated entertainment after. Um, 13, uh, sorry, 2300 hours, except for etc. etc. Experience has taught me that when we have live music and different things at after 11 o'clock, it's starting to get a bit warm, and that's when you want the windows and doors open. I accept the fact that that has implication in noise, um, but also with regards to the recent pandemic, and we've just shut these doors, but we didn't really want to. Do you think that's a fair condition? 
I appreciate that you have to balance up between the two. So I would just like to know your opinion, please. Um, generally, that is actually a standard condition. That's environmental health request on all premises licenses. Okay, thank you. Mr. Vine, can I have your opinion, please? So I think, therefore, yes, is something that we're happy with. We have, it's um, a, probably a room that can take between 50 people that's indoors, um, and it's air-conditioned. Um, so as far as the temperature that you refer to, I can't talk for COVID itself, but um, we're happy with the doors and windows okay. shut. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. And just one other thing that floats back into my mind. As I recall, the original application, yes, it's for 7 o'clock in the morning, um, so previously the Live Music Act, or the, the Music Act um, enabled music to be played, but the application is from seven o'clock in the morning until midnight, Monday to Thursday, etc. But I'm just wondering, the, um, ha has the start time for consumption of alcohol come forward as well to seven? Uh, or is it just so no it, that, so that no. was the opening hours of the premises oh, okay. and they only understand that we we play background music when our breakfast is open yeah. so okay. i think where i've extended the hour for alcohol is on a saturday morning to bring it forward until 10 o'clock to allow people to have a glass of prosecco or champagne with breakfast okay right um and just to confirm on councillor howell's question mm -hmm. It's my experience that that request of external doors being closed is reasonable. In fact, we often request self-closing um, springs on doors to make sure that they do close, uh, and soft, soft closing doors as well. Okay, um, so let's move on to. Uh, sorry, was there anything else, Mr. Vines, that you wanted to make a, a, as part of your submission? So I think that's sorry. Just to finish off the last two points, then were to ex so we have requested to extend the license hours from inside. So that takes us from eleven o'clock until midnight on both Friday and Saturday. It doesn't change. That what's well, obviously that will change from the use. That will be taking anybody outside, inside only. Um, just to bring that in line with the other local businesses, such as the Plough, um, which is licensed, you know, until one thirty. Um, and then the other piece was just to tidy up some of the conditions that we put in on the previous license, such as the last food or at nine o'clock for an outdoor restaurant, um, so that we had a clean, a clean license that was understandable to everybody that was to, to review it. Mm. You'll remember though, or maybe you won't if it wasn't you who applied, but the reason that the conditions were applied as they were was in recognition of the fact that it was, this premises in particular is very much surrounded by residential area um, so okay right we'll bear that in mind so let's move on then um, let's ask the representees if they would like to speak and I'm first of all going to take Mr. Mark Mahn, Tim McMahon online would you like to make your representation this is so as to we so that people who are taking part remotely don't feel we've forgotten them <laughs> So, Tim McMahon, would you like to make your representation? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, Is it possible so, uh, to turn your camera on, Tim? Yeah, just one moment. Thank you. Don't if it's going to scupper your internet connection, but it is good to see people's faces. Does that work? Yep, lovely. We can see you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, I, I live in Markby, close to Oxford, and... Um, yeah, basically, I, I believe since the summer of uh, 2020, we've been very concerned about the, the change of use and the resulting noise on the, the hotel. Um, we believe it's basically changed from uh, its previous use and it's become a venue that seems to be mainly outdoors uh, with a large uh, outdoor eating and drinking space, uh, music, outside bar. Uh, the outside bar is located you know, right at the boundary beside neighbouring properties. Um, and it seems to have changed from being a hotel to being more like an outdoor music venue. Um, and this has resulted in a lot of excessive noise and disturbance to all of us in the area. Uh, disruption continuing outside very late at night. Um, and I just do not believe that this application should be approved. I believe it's a major change um, in the relationship between the hotel and uh, the village. 
Um, the current situation with the outside license until 9.30 uh, with a bar right at our boundary is very, very disruptive. Um, people make noise well beyond 9.30 outside. And the fact that there is an outside bar obviously attracts people to be outside. When there's an inside bar, as there always was, people generally tend to, to drink inside. Um, and we think that this outside license uh, up till 11 o'clock, music, outside bar, um, it's going to make things very difficult, particularly those of us who have children looking to sleep as well. Um, I think an outside license until 11 will basically have people outside up until about midnight. Um, I think the people who bought the hotel in 2019, um, I think they should continue to run it with the license that was in place when they bought it. Um, you know, this was all considered and discussed at length in September 2020. Um, I spoke at that meeting at the time. Um, and the decision, you know, that was made, and I'm, I'm quoting directly here, it said uh, the restrictions were until 9.30 to address the licensing objective of the prevention of public nuisance. Uh, I see no reason why that objective should now be reduced in, in any way. Uh, you know, our rights as neighbours to some peace and quiet after that time, you know, that should not be diminished in any way since 2020. Um, in fact, you know, many other representations have said that the situation has actually got worse since 2020. Um, we had many occasions when music has played uh, very, very late. We had to ring up and ask them to stop. It doesn't stop at 9.30. You know, we, we regularly have to ring up 10 o'clock after 10 asking them to stop. Um, I also think it's quite important to see that um, in 2020, there was a certain number of objections. At uh, this time, the objections are far, far greater in number. Um, and also this time we didn't even get letters in the post, um, whereas we did in 2020. So many people have objected. Um, I, I really think you need to, to look at the volume of objections. I think you need to look at the fact that Duxford Parish Council has objected. Um, we don't think it's suitable at all for the village. Um, that's all I have to say. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. And just where you live, what your address is. Uh, I live in Markby Close, right on the edge of the hotel, with the bar at the bottom of our garden, more or less. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so, can I just clarify, Mr. McMahon? You said that it's got worse since the original licensing um, approval was given in 2020. Uh, and obviously, it's, we've heard today, this morning, that um, Mr. Vine said the sound limiter that was a condition of that um, approval has not been implemented. Um, I'm just wondering if you feel that the, um, and I know elsewhere in the report, People have said that they don't actually see sound recordings being taken. Have you ever seen sound recordings being taken? Or is your wall high enough that you don't wouldn't see that anyway if it was being done? No, we, we, we wouldn't see it. The, the wall is too high, yeah. um, which mainly means that the noise seems to go upstairs where our children are sleeping. But yes. that's just the size of the wall. Obviously, the hotel can't do anything about that. Mm. OK. Uh, and... The other thing you said that you felt that if um, a license was given until 11, that you felt that that would mean that people would be outside until midnight. So can you tell me, do you have any feeling whether the um, current drinking up time is, is uh, being respected? Well, it's, it's very erratic, to be honest, Councillor, because um, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Um, we, we've rung up on several occasions, in particular in relation to the music, um, and we've been told that they have a temporary license. Um, we never get any notices of these temporary licenses. The music sometimes stops at 9.30 and sometimes it goes beyond that. Um, you know, we've, we've children looking to get to bed and we tell them the music will be over at 9.30 and it doesn't. Um, in the summer, with windows open, the, the noise can go on with people chatting very, very loud to leave the premises sometimes. Um, so it, it's very hard to answer. We understand that obviously once you serve alcohol and people are serving or drinking alcohol um, outside that they won't just 
finished straight away. It will take a while to move them. But I really think if it goes to 11 o'clock with an outside bar, it'll be certainly midnight before people start moving on. Thank you very much. Does anybody else have any questions for Mr McMahon? Yes, Councillor Howell. Yes, just, just the one question. I think I can I'll give it to yourself, sir, and then to Ms O'Neill. Um, have you made any formal complaints to South Cam's District Council uh, uh, during this time period? No, I, ha I have rung up and I was told to keep um, a report or a log. But to be frank with you, on a Friday or Saturday night, when, when the noise is the best solution I have is just to ring the hotel um, and ask them, you know, when is the music going to continue? I've had to ring up, you know, beyond 11 o'clock asking for people to, to tell people who are at the bottom of our garden to stop shouting and talking out loud. So, yeah, I, I don't really find it gives me an obvious solution to ring the council. I think the best thing to do is to ring the hotel, which I've done on many occasions. Thank you. And Ms O'Neill, have we had any complaints about the noise from the hotel, please? Thank you. Um, so Environmental Health have confirmed that there has not ever been an established nuisance at the premises. We had a complaint from music from an exercise class and um, a resident also asked on New Year's Eve whether the applicant had a temporary event notice to which Mr Vines did. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms O'Neill, can you confirm what an established nuisance is, define, is defining? What is the definition of that? So that would be where environmental health have had to visit the premises. Um, usually comes after a lot of complaints have been received. Um, in terms of the monitoring of the noise, obviously we would have to ask environmental health about that condition. I wouldn't okay. be able to specify. So from that, we understand that Mr McMahon has confined his complaints to actually ringing up the premises and um, asking them to keep the noise down. Uh, but am I right in understanding, Mr McMahon, that you've never actually rung up in South Camps District Council and made a formal complaint? Uh, yeah, I haven't rang up to make a formal complaint. I did ring up once to ask what the process was and I was told to keep a, a record or a log which you know I have kept some records and I've, I've noted down dates but most of the time I just want the music and the noise to finish so I ring up basically the hotel. Yes. I've had mixed responses from them sometimes I've spoken to one or two people who have been quite good um, unfortunately I've spoken to one or two people who have been quite short with us um, and not really um, well I, Perhaps rude would be the, the word, but, you know, it has been quite mixed. Thank but you it's, very it's, much. The fact, it's the fact that we have to ring up uh, and, uh, you know, when it should be adhered to straight away and the noise should be patrolled better, in my opinion. Thank you. OK. Um, Miss O'Neill, can you just remind me, that um, Music Act, how long does it allow music to be in... Uh, inside and outside premises from 8 a.m until 11 p.m inside and outside yes okay as long as there's a premises license okay certainly councillor harvey yes if i could if i could just ask um Ms. Oman, um this is a situation that sort of uh, evolved contemporaneously with the pandemic as as it has evolved i just wondered um would you like to comment on how that may or may not have affected um your experience of um the, the licensing situation and and your kind of reporting of the nuisance um even though it seems that you haven't actually reported uh, except to the hotel um well, in, in 2020, when everything reopened after to lockdown, um, I, I believe the hotel at this the, the meeting in September 2020 made a big uh, point about how they wanted to have people outdoors, uh, eating outdoors, drinking outdoors, so that was safer. Um, I mean, I, I honestly haven't noticed any difference from September 2020 to present. Um, you know, obviously there have been restrictions in, when was it, December and spring, December 2020 and spring 2021 when a lot of places couldn't open. But generally when there's been, when they have been open, we haven't seen any, any difference whatsoever in, you know, in pre-COVID or after COVID. It's, it just seems to more or less be the same. So, 
I'm not sure if that was the question you were asking. Well, I, I suppose I, what, what I was thinking um, perhaps was that, um, you know, that there have been periods in the, the last two years where effectively nothing's been allowed to happen and there have been other periods where we, we, we can go and um, sort of uh, meet, but, but only outside and not inside. And, and I suppose what I was thinking, you know, perhaps if, if, we, hadn't, if we hadn't had the pandemic, um, maybe then you, you would have experienced a, a sort of um, gradual um, change, or maybe you wouldn't have experienced a change, but at some point, um, then, then um, you, you, you perhaps would have been prompted to make uh, or to take some action where actually um, then, then a, a, another phase of uh, lockdown happens and, and you know, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're effectively resetting at that point. Um, that, that was what I was just really wondering about. In, in yeah. other words, it's difficult to kind of um, uh, judge all these things when, when there's so many external factors happening. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Obviously, when things reopened in, I think it was in July 2020, um, you know, we had obviously had, you know, several months where there was, well, well nothing was open, so there wasn't any real, uh, any, any noise. Um, so obviously, yeah, when it re things reopened in 2020, um, there was a lot of noise. Um, and obviously, whilst it's been closed, there has been no noise. But um, in terms of when they have been open, it's been pretty consistent in that, um, you know, that there's regularly events there, the regularly there's people there late at night drinking and regularly the music goes on. Um, and there have been nights as well. I think uh, the person from the the, uh, the lodge who spoke earlier said that there was no intention to have music beyond uh, Friday and Saturday. Well, Friday and Saturday are predominantly the days that uh, we have music, um, but it's completely incorrect to say there has not been music on other days. Um, we've been treated to some a spectacular music noise on a, a Sunday afternoon. Um, that's one that I can recall, um, which meant we had to ring up. That was in September, October. And we've certainly had noise on Mondays and Tuesdays as well. Um, but yes, predominantly on Friday and Saturday, but it, it is incorrect to say there hasn't been music on other nights of the week. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. McMahon. So perhaps maybe the greater change was um, prior to 2020, it was quieter. Sorry, is that a question? Is that right? So was, in... Sorry, do go ahead. Yeah, so I, I believe the current owners bought the hotel in 2019. It opened in 2019 towards the end of 2019. Um, and... For that short period, I could be wrong on the dates, I think something like October uh, 2019. From that period um, up until when everything closed in March 2020, I don't think we had any reason to complain. Um, obviously, they, those were winter months, um, but uh, as far as I know, people went there for meals, and for drinks, for other activities. Uh, certainly, I have no recollection of anything going on there at that time that prompted me to to complain or be concerned there was a bit of building noise but nothing too much um, but when things reopened in in July 2020 after being closed from March 2020 that's when things completely changed mm. okay thank you very much uh, Mr McMahon um, right so let's go to uh, Yeah, certainly. Yeah, certainly. Um, sorry, just, just to make clear as well, there's also uh, a video clip that has been submitted uh, as well to be played for yourselves at some point when you, when you wish for that to... Okay, thank you, that's good. Okay. Right, so we... Uh, well, let's leave the video clip till the end, perhaps. Um, or... or uh, members, when do you think it would be most useful to take that? We could take that now. And then maybe that will inform people's... Yeah, OK. Let's take the video clip now, if that's OK with you. Okay. Yep, OK. Lovely. Let, so, thank you. Um, so can we just... Can somebody just set the scene for this? What are we about to hear? Lovely. Thank you. Brooke. This was taken from a representative, and it was on the premises itself. So the person was on the premises filming the event. And what time of year... 
So yeah. like summer when people are outside or winter or? They haven't. We don't know when no. it's from. So it's a clip from on the premises. Roughly how long is it going to be? Yes, it's, One it's not very long. And it's, it's just illustrating what's going on yes. inside the premises. Yes. Okay, do so we know what time of day? It was from outside of the tent and I believe it was around 9 p.m. So in the garden, but outside the tent at about 9 p.m. in the evening. Yes. Okay. And, uh, right, okay, let's far away then. Thank you, Chair. I'm just going to get this up and make sure that anybody on the live stream can see it as well. Um, let's just take off my screen. And, of course, it's not showing my bit of it, is it? Sorry, Chair. Let me just... Don't worry, take your time, Aaron. It's there we go. Okay. Okay, so that, just before we start, this tent is in the garden. Which way are we looking at this point? From which are we looking north, or are we looking from the premises down the garden? So this is in the centre of our property and walking along our boundary, so it's going from east, uh, west to east, looking north. So it's from your driveway across? No, so this or walking is, up the driveway. This is right in the centre of our property. Not it, it's in the middle. Um, okay, right. Thank Anybody? you, thank you, Aaron. Yes, please do play the clip. interrupt I do have the date so that was on Saturday the 5th of February 2022 when Mr Vines had a temporary event notice for the event itself okay thank you so Mr Vines can you just clarify roughly how I appreciate that's in the middle of your property so roughly how far is that from your eastern wall that um, adjoins the properties on um, uh, the close um, sorry Mark, mark the close. It's quite difficult to say. I would say probably somewhere between five and ten metres from the start, because that's a walking video. Mm. Okay. Right. Did it, are you happy, members? You're happy. You don't want to hear that again. Are you okay? I don't want to hear it again. No. Okay. Lovely. Thank you very much. So um, let's go to Mrs. Joanne Phillips and hear your representations. Then, thank you. And just before you start, Mrs. Uh, Phillips, would you like to just say where you live? I live at 19 Markby Close, okay. which is directly behind the uh, hotel, and the other side of my house is the plough. The other side of your house is? It's the plough public house. Okay. So is, is actually your, your, wall, your garden walls are joined? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Do go ahead, then. Um, feel free to stop me if I've talked too much. I'm a bit nervous, so just... It's all right. Don't worry. Feel free Please to ask questions. So, so take your time. Um, we've lived there for six years um, and have experienced times where the hotel has been quiet um, and had weddings um, and obviously through this period uh, experienced the times it hasn't. The work in the garden started in August 2019 and obviously with the pandemic the gardens opened um, in July 2020. Um, in August they had an event um, which was, I think, the first time we noticed the noise. And I actually have a picture where the speakers were facing the building, um, which is an anti degree angle to my house. So, unfortunately, because of the building's age and the courtyard being a hard standing, that area amplifies all the noise um, as a natural feature. Um, and therefore, I think my house, particularly, 
because it is side on to the building with my windows and bedrooms, it's more impactful for the people on my side. Uh, approximately about 12 to 15 metres. It's not a very big garden from the boundary wall. Um, so it's not a big distance. It's not a huge garden. So unfortunately, all the people eating in the courtyard, um, it impacts, it is quite visible to me. Um, on the New Year's Eve, a decibel level in my garden, which I did it on my phone, so obviously it's not completely accurate, was 80 decibels and was, as I've noted, rattling my windows at half past 12 at night. Um, I don't know where the temporary license information is kept, but on the website there was only two listed. So when I looked for a temporary license, there wasn't anything mentioned, which is why I said, you know, right, because there was no information apart from being told there was fireworks at 12 o'clock of what time it was finishing. So unfortunately, I had to be up at 5.30 in the morning, so I was concerned of what time it was finishing. Um, I have recorded several instances and written down where, unfortunately, again, due to the amplification, I can hear people singing happy birthday, um, cheering, breaking glasses within my house with the door shut. Um, it unfortunately impacts us throughout the summer because at any of the music, all the windows and doors have to be shut, otherwise we are literally 50, miles, 50 metres away from music. The boundary wall contains, on the other side, the, the hotel side, a pizza uh, bar, which is attached to the wall. And one of the pictures from their social media shows that the speakers and the DJ is literally the other side of the boundary wall, so within sort of 15 metres of my house. Yes, it's pointing away from my house, but again, the amplification in that area which is the courtyard they've built, even with the, the tent they put in the wintertime, it, it makes it even louder, unfortunately, towards my house. Um, the weddings that they had in the hotel before, which as my solicitor when we bought the house described, were mostly on grass. So we, we were aware there was a wedding there, but you would only be able to hear it, say, if you're walking in the garden next to the boundary wall. And again, I suspect that the landscaping noise has changed that amount of music. So we expected absolutely to have weekend weddings. Um, we have weekend events at the Plough as well uh, within their license, and that's, we have absolutely no problem with that. Um, but my objection is that an every weekend license for music will mean that I can't use my house or garden of any events any weekend at all the previous variation um, in November 2020 specifically stated that it would be seasonal, seasonal outdoor dining, seasonal DJs. Um, and in fact, on their social media in December, they mentioned having every weekend events from December onwards within a year of this variation has changed completely. And there has been events in February and March since then. And unfortunately, the frequency of the music, the, the loud, loud tones and the date tones come straight through the wall as well. So while I couldn't necessarily hear the music, it was about 65 decibels as I recorded it, the high notes still penetrated um, inside the house. Um, even with headphones on, it's still able to be heard. As to your question about complaints, because of the lockdown, there's been significant periods of when it hasn't been able to be opened. So for recording purposes, there possibly hasn't been six weeks of events necessarily recently. Obviously, December it has, and that's why we're here now with the changes, because recently it has changed. So our impact has increased over the last four months and, and you're pointing that out because the recording that the Environmental Health Office mm. requires is a recording over six weeks. Yes. Yes. Okay. So... Over, I mean, and we understand that it's a business. You know, it's being run as a business. I live next to the plough, expect them to have a business. My house borders on the outside garden of the plough. I'm, you know, understanding there will be people sat down near, near my house. It's not directly attached to my house. It's, I have a garage. It's behind the garage. So the impact of people eating is something I expect to have. But the idea for me of having music as well, every day from Monday to Sunday in the mornings, whether it's live or, or not. And I appreciate you said it's only going to be weekends, but the license allows it for any time. Um, and it's not necessarily why I'm considering as a business, but as a neighbour, I wouldn't want a neighbour to play music in their garden from every day and be allowed to. So 
that's, you know, from my point of view, I feel that's, if it's up on a license, that, that is a license. The, their use of, you know, the like, previous license has changed already significantly. Mm -hmm. So that allows for everything to be allowed, if that makes sense. Okay, mm. no, that makes perfect sense. And indeed, um, Mrs. Phillips, you remind me, and perhaps I should have said this before, I had, I too have actually attended a wedding. I hadn't thought about it until you mentioned that, and I thought, actually, I've been to a wedding there too. And it, it was going through my mind that I was remembering this as being on grass. And that does obviously make a significant difference. And I can see from the current photography that it's very much been paved on mm. that patio now. And, and that will have a very different acoustic. So absolutely, I understand. Um, does anybody have any questions for Mrs. Phillips? No. No. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for your um, representation. So, Mr. Wright, Mr. Michael Wright, would you like to say where you what your, yes, what your yes. address is? Yes. Um, I've listened to all the technical um, stuff come from Brooke, and I don't quite understand all of it, but it doesn't really matter. I just want to outline um, where I, where I, how I feel and where I stand. I live directly opposite um, Duxford Lodge. And in, in which direction? So I, uh, are you on uh, St. Peter's Street? Straight, um, just nearly opposite their gates. So on St. Peter Street? No, 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 on, on Ickleton Road. On Ickleton Road. On Ickleton okay. Road. And, um, and firstly, I'd like to say I have no animosity or bad feeling with the mm. lodge. They've done a terrific job. I have been over and frequented the place and, ha and had a drink. So there is none, none of that in my mind. I've not phoned them. I've not had to complain. Um, my, we don't have any children uh, living at home, and we don't go to bed till 12, so we hear the music and we say, ah, oh, the lodge have got something else on. Mm. And my, my biggest issue, um, having in my past um, run the Corn Exchange and the Guildhall bars, it, you know, my youth getting the staff and running all the outside bars, I know how difficult it is to turn it off on the times when you say it's got to finish. Mm. Moving people on, their voices are obviously a lot louder because they have had plenty to drink. Um, that's where the issue comes on, on my behalf. Now, I'm not sure from our lovely legal lady over there whether, whether I picked up uh, did you say the parking does make a difference to the licensing application? It doesn't. See, our problem is that obviously that they have now very limited car parking space because they've got this outside area and a, a, and a grassed area. So my complaint is that when the road is full of cars, Unfortunately, there's no point in me showing you the pictures of where they're parked completely over the paths and everything, because that's irrelevant to you guys. But what isn't irrelevant is that the guys, the people come out of the lodge late at night, and then they stand at their cars, they're talking, the doors are shutting, and so on. Yep. Our complaint is basically um, that. And if you go later, you're going to move the, the, the talking and uh, everything else further into the night and we sleep in our bedrooms at the front and there lies our major our major issue uh, so I, I, I would go along with all the other guys with the music noise but on a personal note because of how our life is um, it doesn't affect us but I can understand how it can um, and to summarise from, from what the, the other guys have said, you know, when these people moved into the lodge, they've done a fantastic job. We thought it was a hotel. Because of the pandemic, um, obviously, they've had to take their business into the garden. They need to make a living, which I totally understand, being in business myself. Um, but it's absorbing the premises. It's not going inside. You can't get the number of people that can stand outside inside, so you can't move it. So you're now going to have a situation maybe at 11, half past 11 at night, where you've got, you know, upwards. I've been to an outdoor theatre um, thing on the grass, which they've had 50 people sitting there, and that's only in this area. So in fairness, the lodge could probably house 150, 200 in the garden. Now, if that was to happen, you know, we, we all know 200 people 
having a good time, that noise rises. Unfortunately, sorry to say it because of my age, but the music, when I have been there, is that music that goes thud, 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 thud. It's not Matt Monroe or the Beatles, you know, it's um, a different type. Um, obviously, they're catering for a more modern type of clientele. So, um, hopefully, I've got that my, my point over to you. Um, and say the, my biggest issue was the fact that it's when they leave the premises because I, I've got, you know, up to 30 cars in a line parked up on the curbs and everything and people go out and they're standing there, they're chatting, shutting their doors. Okay, thank you. And uh, I just, I appreciate um, what... Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, okay. um, because I did this only two weeks ago. Okay. If I may just play this on there, just, standing on my front door. Okay, just have a moment. Are you happy, Mr. Vines, that the gentleman plays a recording on yeah, his that's, that's fine. phone? And Aaron, will that be okay to do that in the hall? Uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully it will be. It was only a short one. I, I, I really did it for the parking, which obviously is irrelevant to you guys. Too close to the microphone because we might yes, get I will. feedback. I'm just, just going to take it off flight mode because obviously I turned it on there. So if it bleeps a couple of times, it's because it's picking up the messages. But no worries. Did you hear the music there? Yes, okay. Yes. So that was sounds of cars, was it? Yeah, Plus and music, music over behind the top, it. Behind if it. If you can see, I am standing at my front door, and this is my drive with my vehicles on it. And there's the main road, and the and the and the lodge is over on that corner. Yes. So I was picking it up at eight o'clock on a Wednesday evening, two weeks ago. I think it was a week. No, it could have been a Friday evening. Sorry, because I went to Cheltenham, so it could have been Friday if I come back. Okay. Um, so, so what we. So Learn what I'm saying that is, is that I could hear that on door. my front doorstep and I'm not on the boundary like these guys are. So from your front door, we could hear noises of cars, but we could also hear the, not, the, the, yeah. the thumping of music in the background. Yeah, sorry, it's not yeah. very good on here, is it? I'm, so. I'm not saying thumping in a pejorative way, just trying to describe, distinguish it from the noise of the cars. Yes, yes. Okay, righto. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, members, have you got anything questions to ask? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's, it's not so much a question to Mr. Wright, but it is what Mr. Wright has just said, and I'm going to use your letter that you give on page 54 to ask a question to Mr. Vine. So, Mr. Vine, um, on, on page 54, we have a letter from Mr. Wright, and on the last paragraph, it says there, with regards to, um, shall we say, the difficulty of staff to get people to come back indoors. And I see that's also a condition that has been placed on page 4, with regards to the last bullet point. Could you just alleviate my concerns that I have there that it would be difficult to bring people back indoors if they're outside sitting in the garden enjoying a drink late one evening? So where we do have a challenge is obviously it's a hotel which operates 24 hours a day and residents are able to... Can you just slow down a little bit? Could you bit, just um, bring your microphone closer to you? <laughs> just slow and down. Don't, don't rely on the microphone. We need to hear you speaking clearly. Sorry, it's just the acoustics of the room. It's a... So we're used to it, so we know, but thank you, absolutely. <laughs> thank so you. obviously as a hotel, it's, there's residents there which could be up to 32 people 24 hours a day that can do as, you know, as they wish, essentially. We operate as a restaurant outdoors and also, as we've, you know, it's clear, an event venue um, for certain events. So there is an element of challenge in making sure the right people have left at the right times. Um, obviously, what we clearly see here is not everybody's aware when there's a temporary event notice in place which does change the time that people are able to leave um, and that may, is also including for the outdoor the outdoor area the we've been very clear in our events and especially when we do the temporary event notice to make sure that any sort of loud music is 10 p.m at its latest and then it's we're, we're talking now about ambient music anything past that to support what may be done but Yes, it's a challenge, but we try and do the best that we can. And knowing that you can separate those guests between who is a restaurant diner that will leave or stay in the inside bar, who is a resident which has a bar to use indoors, or an event that we can clear out, um, but something to be focused on. 
Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Um, right, you raise, Mr. Vines, the fact that um, residents can't know when you've got a 10. Have you ever, you know, gone round and met the neighbours and asked to take their email addresses so that you could let them know when you've got a 10, for example? We never have. The first time I ever did anything was on New Year's Eve where we put leaflets through the doors just to say, by the way, there would be someone invite anyone to join us because we also had fireworks, which is probably more of an inconvenience than, than music based on the noise and pets. Um, but definitely something that we need to look at doing where there's a group just to advise it, on activities. It seems prior to you, you becoming the um, owner, the, the, there's been a, a less contentious situation and, and I just wonder I'm not saying you're contentious but I'm just saying the things that you're doing have caused more disruption than the previous ownership oh right okay um, and so I'm just wondering if you've undertaken to meet the neighbours and actually engage with them and understand them and I, can, I, I know Brooke would like to say something so Miss O'Neill would you like to speak very chairman um, what I just wanted to clarify was the tents should be published on a public register, but we've migrated systems from Laupac to Tascomi, which meant that they have been unavailable for a few months. Okay, but um, I know of other premises that do, as you say, Mr. Vines, leaflet their neighbours just to let them know when they're having an event. Um, and given that you, what, what I'm slightly concerned about, Mr. Vines, is that, you know, we've had um, both Mr. McMahon and um, Mrs. Phillips saying that they've sometimes rung you and got differing um, responses from your staff. Um, now, surely, if you're part of a village community, you're a business, but you're part of a village community, it would seem a good plan, would it not, as a manager of a business to actually maintain good and sympathetic relationships with your neighbours? I mean, have you got anything that you want to say about that? I definitely agree more can be done. There's no question about that to keep everybody informed by email maybe. As far as the team and the phone calls, it, unfortunately with the hospitality industry, it's a young set of staff and I imagine when someone's probably angry, it's not the, the nicest phone call um, to be receiving. So that how that's treated is obviously questionable how they may deal with it, which I picked up from. As I both. understand it, in business, um, the customer's always right, especially at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> yes, but if, you have, if you're 17 years old and someone's shouting at you uh, on the phone, it's probably, you know, you're auto automatically taken aback, and, like, you know, there's probably a better way to be handling that, so it's not yes. so abrasive. So, um, who would yeah, sorry, be I just would like to, would just be like the to have, I... So, just one moment, Mr. McMahon. I just want to ask Mr. Fine something else. Who would be the responsible person on the site at that time of night? Uh, there's a varying team of management um, that are around, but are also participating in the service. Uh, Miss O'Neill, is that appropriate? Wouldn't wouldn't it be one named person who should be responsible on a premises? Yes, the DPS. Exactly. The designated premises supervisor. Do you have a designated supervisor? designated premises supervisor who should be responsible for handling um, everything that's going on in, the, in, in any premises and any licensed premises at any time of day or night. It doesn't have to be the Sorry, same person. Sorry, the Chair, if I may just yeah, sure. there, just to support hopefully the, the committee. Uh, Miss, Miss um, Jackson, thank you. <laughs> right, well, Jackson, do thank go. you okay. so much. It is not uncommon for a, a business to have a designated premises supervisor, which of course is required in the licensing act. However, we'd have a list of authorised officers or appointed officers in, in Mr. Vine's team who would be responsible for the day-to-day -day management. But of course, a DPS cannot be there 24-7. However, we'd have a list of responsible persons who would be, in effect, operating on behalf of the designated premises supervisor in their absence. But they would take on the delegated powers of the designated responsible officer, would they not in his absence or her correct. absence? Yes, they're acting on behalf of the designated premises supervisor. So they should be more than capable of handling a grumpy phone call at night and being courteous to it, in my view. Right. Mr McMahon, do carry on. You wanted to make a point. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to clarify that I've never been uh, grumpy or angry when I've, uh, when I've rung them up. Uh, I've always tried to to explain the license and and to plead and just to to tell people quite politely that we um, wanted to know when the music was going to stop um, and and once or twice we had uh, very constructive conversations with people but at some points we have had people who have been you know quite rude to us we had a comment once along the lines of oh you people are never happy 
which you know and, and I, indeed, I would really like to emphasize we, we've never rung up with a, an aggressive angry tone with people and indeed um, that is my experience of people ringing up because they want to achieve a better situation so it's their motive is not to sit there and shout but to actually say please could you um, keep the noise down so mr vines have you got anything to say about that no i haven't got anything further to say other than obviously there's some work to be done thank you excuse me mr. yes uh, mr wright yes could I, could I just say that listening to that last piece of conversation reference to temporary licenses and to the fact that there should be somebody more responsible at the end this is uh, this is not working at the times we've already got so if it's not working now going away from here and, and you considering uh, granting the application and Mr. Vines are going away and saying we're going to deal with it. That really, to me, isn't isn't the answer. The answer is to make sure it's working first, and then put an application back in at a later date where we can come along and, and we've got no we've got no questions or answers. Not not to extend it now until it's been proven. So what we're saying here is that. The reason we've got 20 odd written representations is because many people don't feel that the um, existing conditions are either being respected or enable them to live quiet lives in their, in, and have the amenity of their gardens. So I think we, we have a there's a loss of trust, isn't there, between the residents and yourself at the moment because people have been upset. Whereas, for example, um, we know that the plough is very close and it has similar hours, but we haven't had any problems there as far as we know. And Mrs Phillips, who lives next door to the plough, hasn't had any um, the similar problems there. So, do you want to say anything about that? without wishing to seem difficult, uh, but it may appear that that's the case. I haven't got any formal complaints, um, and everything that we've done has been within the eyes of the law. We've applied for a licence, which may not appeal to everybody for extended hours. Um, so the control measures that were put in place have been adhered to. Um, um, well, with the exception of the sound limiter and the... So just, if I may pick up on the sound limiter, I, I, I will find an email in there, but following the last hearing, and actually I don't know if that, that is still available to, to view as it was recorded, um, it was always the condition that the environmental health would come and work with us, work in the village and agree the level, choose the sound limiter that we should install and, and do that with us. I remember. Um, and that has never actually happened. Um, what I'm trying to find is I've got, there is an email where we've asked for that meeting to take place so that we could adhere to that condition. Mm. Um, it's not that we've not done it or ignored it. Um, this hasn't happened yet. Our choice. Okay. Um, there is, again, I think it's been unclear about what we are allowed to do and not, and there's clearly some changes that can be made, such as an email that can go around when we've got an event on or something that's different, but that should be the abnormal side of it rather than the, the, you know, the traditional trade. Um, Mr Vines, can I just ask, in view of what you just said, do you think that is why the Environmental Health Officer, and perhaps we can ask um, Ms Jackson, is that why the Environmental Health Officer has proposed the condition that we've got on, the, the series of conditions that we've got on page five? Because she recognises that the work that was recommended before hasn't yet been instigated. So when I met with Chloe, that was something that I asked for, yes. is that they come and tell us what this accepts. You know, we can't, we would like, we should, no, actually, we probably wouldn't. We, we would choose a level of music that was up to our taste and not necessarily everybody's. It was only fair that a, an outside party suggested this was an acceptable level that was fine and we would then work to that, uh, okay. which is why I asked for that condition. I'm, I'm not sure it's up to the Environmental Health officers, Officer to suggest what is appropriate. It's for them to monitor what you... you Because this takes a heart and mind thing, doesn't it? If you want to be part of your community and work in there, you have to put yourself in their shoes and say, well, what's going to be acceptable to them? I think this is reasonable. We'll have it monitored, and then we'll see how... It, and as long as we comply with that, then that's a step. I'll come back to you. Then yeah. that's a, a way to go. It's not for you to say, well, we think this is OK, and if it's too loud, they've got to tell us to be quiet. 
So, Brooke, do you, Miss O'Neill, would you like to speak? Yes. Um, so, I think Environmental Health realised that that was not in place, which is why um, they put in a condition that a device will be installed on the premises. Yes, exactly. Um, because I remember the um, Environmental Health Officer at the time it being extremely helpful about the previous application and suggesting that we should do this. I'm, I'm really sorry it hasn't been um, put in place. And so I can absolutely understand why this bullet um, at item nine is so extensive. Ms Jackson, do go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. I just want to make a point as well about with the installation of any noise recording device, any noise limiters, etc. We have obviously specialist acoustics technicians within environmental health. So I would expect them to work very closely with the hotel and indeed any premises who are seeking the device. And obviously it's about a balancing act to make sure what is the decibel limit appropriate, obviously with noise limits, etc. with regard to the traffic we heard on and your noise monitoring there as well. So obviously it is very much relying on not just what the applicant wishes to have, because of course what a hotel may wish to have may be poles apart from what a resident thinks is sensible and a pragmatic approach. And that's obviously why we have the intermediate approach of our experienced environmental health officers. So I think moving forward, as I say, with the pandemic, obviously, as you appreciate, the work available, you know, outreach work with environmental health is obviously, it was based on obviously meeting, you know, being safe and obviously safe premises, etc. So obviously this going forward, depending on your decision today, of course, is something that environmental health will be working with Mr. Vines on to make sure noise limiting equipment is appropriate and sensible and of course does not cause any statutory noise nuisance. And just one other point, if I may, Chair, with respect, is obviously there's clearly mentioned obviously disturbance at say 8 p.m. with regard to noise nuisance. You've got to remember, as Brooke already mentioned, the Live Music Act, which has been in force for a couple of years, obviously this applies any condition relating to noise and nuisance. The only way your committee would be entitled to put any conditions on relating to noise from library or music after 11 p.m., which is clearly causing residents some concern, would be what, by way of a review hearing. Mm. So obviously your issues for today are looking at the extension of alcohol sales, obviously the use of the outdoor bar area, and I think there was an extension to 12.30 or 11.30 for recorded music inside, which of course is a matter for your committee, but, um, and also the extension uh, to commence alcohol sales from 10 a.m. That's what you're looking at really today. Mm. Unfortunately, not conditions, and obviously our legal advisor here will should be able to uh, confirm what I'm saying is correct, but any conditions related to noise with respect it would not be a matter for you to be able to put on a license today because you don't have the power to do so as per the Live Music Act. Uh, no, that's right. But, um, sorry, I'll come to you in a moment. The, the, um, one of the things I wanted to ask you was would the environmental health officer be um, given that given that the noise arrangements on the current license have not apparently were uh, been complied with would the environmental health officer work with um, mr vines to make sure that they are complied with even if I'm not, I'm not prejudging the committee, but you know we have a number of options here. And if we said no, I'm not saying we would, but if we said no, would the environmental health officer work with Mr. Vines with regard to the current conditions on the license? Absolutely, that is, that, that is our function of environmental health and protection of public nuisance. Okay, right on. Councillor Hull. Thank you, can I just bring you to, uh, Ms. Jackson, if you don't mind, please. At uh, page five, bullet point two, I just want to look at the opening sentence there. The suitability, sorry, the suitable environmental noise control device should be installed in the premises, fine. Calibrated and set to the satisfaction of the council's noise control officer. So it's we that actually do that, to our satisfaction. I just want to clarify that. The ones that I've worked with in the past, if them that particular noise level is breached, automatically can cut out the, mu the music. Is that the type of system that you're talking about? There is a variety, but you're absolutely right, Councillor Howell. That is one of the options. It would have an automatic cutout. Once it reaches an accessible level, the noise okay. altogether would go, which obviously okay. destroys the whole... Also, atmosphere. it is in my experience that there is a huge difference between playing noise at a particular level when the room is empty to when the room is very full of bodies. So can I ask, 
would this be calibrated when it's under, shall we call it, live conditions? From previous experience, I can't obviously confirm it's how it can, but previously where I've worked elsewhere, that's exactly how it would happen. It'd be a pointless exercise to say, a room now, calibrating the noise level, and a room compared to having 50 people in, 100 people in. Right, yeah. That's fine. It has to be a working in progress. That's fine. That's good. Thank so, you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, so we've got an undertaking that regardless of the outcome of this hearing, that we would have the environmental health officer has undertaken to go and look at the premises with regard to the calibration of the system, the installation, and limiting uh, arrangements. Okay, so that's good. Having said that, um, I sort of went through and summarized the changes, and the first one is this sort of live music to midnight, whereas the Live Music Act allows live music to up to 11 p.m., doesn't it? Um, so that would, the application would be for an hour beyond the normal Live Music Act permission. So perhaps, Mr. Vines, you'll confirm for me, my understanding, or perhaps officers would confirm, my understanding is these changes summarized include the addition of live music to midnight indoors and outside to 10 p.m. Yes, that's correct. The addition of recorded music um, to midnight, I think that was indoors, and half past midnight on Friday and Saturday. Was that indoors or outdoors? I'm sorry. So both of those are indoors, and then the, the brackets at the bottom are limiting the outdoor yeah. to 11 so. o'clock. Okay, and but, then... Sorry, just to cl okay. clarify there, there was a misunderstanding with what we class as recorded music as being ambient background versus a DJ which plays recorded music. So for outside, for a DJ, for example, if we were to do that, we were saying that nothing would be later than 10 o'clock. Okay. So recorded music. So that's indoors and outside. But, but it says indoors and outside, Monday to Thursday... Seven o'clock, which we're trusting is going to be your ambient music. You won't be doing DJ stuff at seven o'clock in the morning. But then t to midnight, indoors and outdoors. So you only we can only apply for the timings in one for, for our entire premises, which is why the additional notes were put on to clarify what the outside requirement was. Mm. Oh, I see. Outside area, ambient music, not to start before nine and finish by eleven. So, Ms. Yes, Neil, so Mr. Vines has already accepted the condition for Good. environmental okay. health, which um, states live and or recorded music constituting regulated entertainment shall not be permitted in the external areas of the premises after 11 p.m. on any day except New Year, where this can be extended until 12.30 a.m. Okay, so just let's get, get clear. The previous condition said it should stop at 9.30? Yes but that was not yes. in compliance with the Live yes. Music Act. So is that partly why you've been carrying on with music later? So we've never carried on with music later without a temporary event notice, um, okay. which is then for a special event. Right, -o. okay. So going on down through the list then, we've got the summary here, haven't we? Live music indoors and outdoors until midnight, but not outside until only until um, 11. And then late night refreshment. You hadn't had, you didn't have this before, did you? So this is to cover your outdoor bar and um, offer. Sorry, that. So the late night refreshment is to cover the inside hotel operations for the restaurant. Ah, okay, right. Okay. But it doesn't cover your outdoor bar. Or oh, I suppose it will because it's indoors and outdoors. It's, yeah, it's Again, I copied the same limitations at the bottom to make sure that there was no outdoor bar past eleven o'clock at any point. And uh, for the terms that we've agreed to with the environmental health was about the drinking past 11 outside. Okay, and you said no, it currently says no food orders from nine and you're saying no, no. So I've asked that seating. to be amended the wording because it's confusing just to say that so we can seat our last table at nine o'clock. Last table to be seated at nine, okay. And sorry, if I, if I may just, just state in here Let's at this point, it. we have asked, and, um, and I'm happy to put into some agreement about music, you know, 
no one, I understand no one can put a condition on us that we can play music past 10 o'clock, but we're happy to accept those terms. Uh, and the same, I'm not worried about it in any other day of the week unless there's a special event situation which we apply for. I don't know how there's a position that we can have that stated that Monday to Thursday or Monday to Wednesday or Sunday to Wednesday, we're not after live entertainment outside. It's not, that's not in our interest. It's not something that we want to do for the area or for our own business. But I, there's nothing to give everyone this guarantee that can be written into a document. Uh, the, the unfortunate thing is that once a license is applied, it applies to the, it goes with the land. It doesn't go with the, um, the um, publican so, or, or the, land, the owner. So, you know, you might have that view, but we need to be careful of the circumstances in which the lodge is, you know, for any future if person who had the license. So can I just come back to an understanding of what your view is of your business in the village of Duxford? So on a day-to-day -day basis, it's supposed to be a hotel with an alfresco restaurant, which has got its Mediterranean courtyard and pizza kitchen. <coughs> Excuse me. And that being added to or enhanced by on a Friday and a Saturday evening, background, which, you know, be careful with the word background, sorry, a live DJ playing music whilst people eat. This is not a party, it's not a nightclub, this is supposed to be music that you can still talk and have dinner at, which is how the normal operation happens. We also then have an event side of the business where there may be weddings or um, other events, christenings, birthday parties, etc., which then want something a little bit different, which is a bit more of a party situation. Um, and that, at the minute, we've been using the temporary event notice process for. So what would you say the impact is of your business on your neighbours, given what you've heard today and the representations you've heard, you've read in the papers? So from looking through, obviously, there's, it's clear that it's confusing about what we are and are not allowed to do for everybody, which I think starts off on a, you know, a, a backward foot there because it just causes frustration. Um, and because it's unclear to everybody what, what can be done and when, um, we frustrate people with noise. There were some measures taken last year, and a noise control device will obviously help that because it's someone's actually saying this is what acceptable looks like. Um, to everybody to understand the acoustics from the different houses um, all along Markby Close or off the scene, it's very difficult for us to, to say or not. But you know, it's not our intention to be there and, and annoy people. Um, it was supposed to be a, another community business and part of it. Okay, um, one of the things I noted when I was reading through your application, and I cannot now find my notes, but. I'll go to, I noticed you said we want to bring the license in line with our business. And I thought, well, actually, no, the point is that the business should have been working in line with the license. Um, I understand the point about some aspects of it being confusing. But I suppose what I just want to understand from you is whether you recognize you have an impact on your neighbors and how you view your responsibilities with regard to that. So we've already mentioned the fact that sometimes when people ring up and ask you to turn the noise down, um, because even if it is before 11, it's not unreasonable to ask people to turn noise down. Um, you know, that you should have staff on there who accept that, you know, you're part of a community and you have a responsibility to them. Um, and to go and to turn the noise down, <laughs> You know, not, not argue or whatever. So, I mean, I just wondered, I want, I want to hear from you. Yes, we accept what you're, what you're saying. We recognise that we have a responsibility to our neighbours. I, I suppose that's cute. I, I, do, I do absolutely recognise that, yes. You know, and I, and I, I hope I've never come across any different. Where I've said in the application about, uh, you know, matching the level of business to, to, run, to run a restaurant, for us, it's very difficult. You, we bring people to a courtyard that can probably sit maybe 60 to 70 people in one night um, for dinner. And you can come in and you can book a table from five o'clock in the afternoon until nine o'clock in the evening. And if you come at six o'clock, you'll just have our background music. If you come at seven o'clock, there may be a live DJ playing. Um, and if you order a drink, you will get it from the, served by a waiter from the bar one side of the courtyard until 9.30. But the team that are serving will go inside and serve you at 9.35 from the other room that you can't see. If you sit down at 
10 to 9, we have to take your entire food order at once, including dessert, to make sure that we don't take a food order past 9 o'clock to meet the conditions. But if you sit down at 8 o'clock, you'll have your starters and main courses, and you can choose whether you'd like a dessert or not. Um, so that's where I'm trying to say I'm trying to bring the license in line with the business to allow us to make run an operation smoothly. And unfortunately, in all of that, you haven't once referred to your neighbours, but... Okay, I hear what you say, and you're running a business. I do understand what you're saying. One of the other things is that it would seem reasonable to observe that since 2020, there has been a proliferation of both hard standing outside the back of the, in your, in your garden, but also a proliferation of different types of ways of encouraging people to be outside. So lots of tables, tents, um, Pergola. It was originally a pergola, wasn't it? But then, you know, it's obvious, you know, you have expanded the operation that's going on in the garden, obviously due to pandemic, largely. So, the, so you must accept that there is more going on in the garden than used to. We have, yes. So obviously, and there's things which we mentioned earlier on. One of the noise complaints was about the sports, which we stopped. We put private dining pods in, which you know, to stop any use of the top lawn, so that we've come away from that part of the wall. It's in an enclosed space. Um, the idea of the teepee, which is the covered space now outdoors, was just so that we can continue using our space um, in the British weather rather than... It also then presented an opportunity, which was not the initial piece, to allow a, a, you know, a space that people could use all year round for an outdoor COVID-friendly space. OK, thank you. Mr Wright. Yes, um, just a couple of questions. One to the committee. Um, temporary licences... Um, are there, can, are there notifications to people so that they can be objected to? They just come directly to you and, and you say yes or no. So in that I believe, event... I believe they have to be advertised, no? On the website, okay. So. Um, no, so you can't object to a temporary event notice? No, so th there, is a, there is always possibilities that there could be three events on in one week and then what we are discussing today is irrelevant because you're going to get three nights of extended music and extended um, alcohol um, if they are granted. Yes, um, so a, a premises can have a maximum of 12 tens per year and an overall limit of 21 days. 21 year. days, that's great. Yeah. Thanks for that answer. And the other answer, uh, the other question is to... Me, please, to, to me, please. Direct your questions through me. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's My other question was, uh, Mr. Yes. Brian, what happens when you have 150 people in your garden and then you have to move indoors when you only have a premises that can hold 50? What happens to those other 100? Do you send them home? Or are they still going to be outside taking their drink from inside to out because they can't stand, they can't be inside? And the circumstances in which that might happen would be at the end of a... Uh at the end of the licensing hours. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Vines, would you like to answer that question? Sorry. So, the question... So, if, the, if people weren't drinking outside and they got to the point at 11 o'clock when, the, when it needs to be, um, Mr. Wright believes they need to move indoors, I think, actually, the answer to that is the sale of alcohol allows drinking up, does it not? Now it's drinking up time, is it not, in the garden? But I suppose the general point is, how do you get people to move out of your premises and either go home um, quietly? So, so it was about the 100 people. Yes, we can't fit 100 people inside. Yes, so if there's a function outside, but the licensing law for the courtyard as opposed to inside the premises is different. You, they can drink longer inside the building and the music can go longer inside the building. If you've got a function that's outside with live music, but they want to now join the at inside 11 at 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. but the property can't house those people, what happens? what's going to happen? Because I, I, I fully understand that it's a difficult situation for getting young staff to be able to say, I'm ever so sorry, but we're at capacity, you're going to have to leave. One, it's no good for business, and two, they, don't, they won't okay. have the authority to do that. Okay, so let's ask Mr. Vines, and Mr. Art Vines, Mr. Dress's answer to me. So, if, for us, events are pre-booked element. 
and um, they have closing times and we apply for licenses so everybody knows our current setup and then we so if, if someone's going to have a party for example we would say to they would like live music until 10 and they'd like our bar to open until 12 we apply for a license for that and as part of the general booking process there we do look at how taxis collect people and when they leave and the lodge doesn't open itself for that because the license currently goes to the whole park if that was to change we can't physically accommodate the people in the same space anyway so it wouldn't be an op it, would, it wouldn't be operationally possible for us to do it we would operate in exactly the same way the inside element of our bar is we also operate a general restaurant from the, the room which can take maybe 40 50 people that's that's something for them and a cocktail bar inside which is a different level of different type of clientele so the question is how do your staff encourage people to so from 11 o'clock when you're not allowed to have any more musical activity in the garden how do you encourage how do your staff encourage people to either leave quietly or come into the building so at, at the minute we have to do exactly the same as sister bit earlier on so there's the bill presented they have to close um, and we are and we ask people to go home let's know that's exactly as it happens now um, it's one of, it's it's just one of those things we're not really a late night venue and have never been that late i understand you know the, the evidence that we're looking at here for some of the complaints is about an event but in the, on the day-to-day -day operational basis we're not mm, but you're the, these 20 people have complained about the noise of people leaving and i'm a bit disappointed not to hear you saying right i pre appreciate they perhaps haven't been doing a good enough job up to now we need to work a bit harder on encouraging our clients to leave quietly um, because that also is a responsibility of the um, designated responsible person or their delegated authority. So, righto. Members, any other questions for anybody? Um, Mr. McMahon, is there anything else that you wanted to say? Um, no, um, I, I think I've tried to explain everything and what I said and I've just asked you to look at what Duxford Parish Council has said and the sheer volume of people who have made representations this time because I, I don't believe the situation can get any worse if uh, or will get worse if the license is extended. Okay. Um, this is, um, oh I'm sorry, I do apologise. Mrs Phillips. <laughs> Do you have anything to say? Um, as far as the business, we all support it. We always did, um, especially in lockdown and how difficult it's been. Um, as a hotel, we expect it to have events, absolutely normal. And they've had events, they've been lovely events, um, not a problem. The difference in December was having events every weekend, every single weekend, and going forward, different from the variation in November 2020, when it was specifically stated by the license holder that events would be, DJs would be summertime and it wouldn't be outside dining. So the difference between a year, which into December, is what has impacted us most, I think. And it's a different, you know, once a week, once a month, you know, you expect some events, possibly a Saturday night for a wedding, not a problem. But every single weekend is a major impact as far as use of your house use of your garden, yes. uh, which is why I'm here. And I appreciate it's a, it's a business and this is something they want to do, mm -hmm. but my house is the longest garden at, at 20, 12 metres. The rest of the houses have much smaller gardens than I do and are much closer to the wall. Mm -hmm. So their impact is even more, Yes, um, and, and unfortunately. And very interesting points about the, roof, the, the, the mm. echoing of noise from the walls. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they did address a lot of issues. They put a barbecue next to the wall, smoking area next to the wall. But we didn't have any consultation at that time of what they were doing or what impact was. And, and Tim's children in that garden was next to the smoking area, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And it still is. I don't know if they still use the smoking area, but that's, that's the designated area at the time. Yes. Yes. So unfortunately, from the beginning, there was a lack of consultation as to what they were doing the other side. Um, and now we feel that we're expected to listen to music every weekend. Or, or expected to complain formally about it. I mean, lockdown has that. changed things. Sometimes it bails open, sometimes they haven't. The same has been for the plough. And throughout the summer with the lockdown, they had um, a marquee outside the plough, literally next to my back garden. So you wouldn't expect to complain. 
because that was what businesses needed to do, mm. absolutely. Which is hence why there hasn't been a lot of complaints from my side okay. to support the business in that respect. Right, Shirley, thank you very much indeed. So, Shirley, this, um, oh God, I can't remember anybody's name today, I'm so sorry. Um, Shirley Tracy, did you have any further? Uh, sorry, Mr. Wright's already spoken again, haven't you? We've had, we've heard from Mr. Um, Vines. So, Ms. Tracy, as legal officer, would you like to give us any summing up? Chair, just to remind you that, of course, we're here today to look at the application for the extension and not the um, hours that are in existence at the moment. Uh, and just to be mindful of that when you're deliberating. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. Um, was there anything further from the licensing officers? No, thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so... Um, Did you want to make any final closing remarks, Mr. Vines? I think just in there for me, if it's okay, you, you've mentioned twice that I've not recognised the village or the noise um, and, and our impact there. And I, I clearly haven't made myself very clear because I do recognise we're part of the village and I have said that earlier on. Um, so I do recognise this. And I also said that we have a team which clearly need to work on you know, some training. So just to reiterate that point, just to make it clear so that it's understood, you know, there is, there is work to be done that should be done as a result of this. You know, either way, whether this is granted today or not, um, you know, there's, still, there's still some work for the villagers and for us as a business. So okay. I just wanted to make that point clearer than I may have done from the two times I spoke earlier. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Right, with that then, um, thank you very much everybody for taking part and Tim for taking part online. Um, we, uh, the panel and the legal officer stay in the room and we and the clerk stay in the room, we have our deliberations. Um, but we will um, send you our response in writing uh, within, what's the number of days, Ms Jackson or Ms O'Neill? We write to you fairly promptly anyway, once we've made a decision. I think it's within 10 days we write to you um, to give you the outcome. But thank you very much indeed. So is it? <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was seven. Oh, seven days. Okay, even quicker. So, but thank you very much indeed for coming and for making your cases so eloquently. Thank you very much, Mr. Bynes, for take, taking part. Thank you. And we will um, write to you within seven days to give you the outcome. And I'm sure we would advise the people who've made representations as well. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.